Hey everyone, my name is Kevin Tarr. I'm an iOS engineer. I specialize and focus on creating virtual reality and augmented reality applications for the iPhone. Today, I am starting a new series focused on algorithms and Swift. Swift is and has been the primary language for Apple since 2014 and has been the primary language for developing applications for the Mac OS and the iPhone. And today, and going forward, <laughs> we're going to be discussing common interview questions and common algorithms that you get asked when you're trying to apply for jobs as an iOS engineer. And today, one of my favorite interview questions we're going to be discussing is the pangram problem. So let's get started. Hey everyone, so this is our problem right here. It says, write a function that returns true if it is given a string that is an English pangram, ignoring letter case. Tip, a pangram is a string that contains every letter of the alphabet at least once. At least once, excuse me. Uh, valid pangrams. Uh, so I'll put up some valid pangram examples for you guys to see. Uh, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Two driven jocks help fax my big quiz. The five boxing wizards jump quickly. So these are uh, sentences in the English language that have every letter of the alphabet appearing at least once. Uh, and some of these are invalid pangrams. Uh, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Does not have an S in it versus jumps, has it? Three driven, jo three driven jocks help fax my big quiz. Does it have uh, a W in, inside of it? Or I think well, it has a O, but it has a W in it. And the six boxing wizards jump quickly doesn't have an F or a V. This does have an F and V. So valid pangrams and invalid pangrams, just so you guys can understand. Okay? So I'm going to just um, solve this problem with the brute force approach first. And, um, you know, if I feel a bit fancy, I'll add some more solutions uh, to this problem and further iterations of this series. But here we go. So. Um, I'm gonna, so basically, just to let you guys know what I'm going to do, I'm gonna create a string that has every letter of the alphabet inside of it, the alphabet, A to Z. And then I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna collapse the casing, I'm gonna lowercase the, uh, the string that's passed in, um, just, to, just so we ignore uh, capital letters because Swift recognizes capital letters to be different from lowercase letters. I'm gonna make them all lowercase. And then I'm gonna go through the string and every time I reach a letter, I'm going to ask, I'm going to look in the alphabet string and see if that letter um, is in the alphabet. If the letter is in the alphabet, that character, excuse me, that character is in the alphabet, I'm going to remove that character, that letter out of the alphabet string. I'm going to go through the entire string until I have no more letters in my alphabet. If I have no more letters in my alphabet, then I'm going to return true because that means that we've We've identified every letter of the alphabet. If I finish the entire for loop and there's still letters in my alphabet string, that means that we didn't identify every letter in the alphabet and it's not a valid pangram. So that's our logic. If it's a bit foggy, ambiguous, um, it'll be much clearer when I finish this. So I'm just going to do this really quickly. So I'm going to create my alphabet string. It looks like a valid alphabet set to me. Then um, for string, uh, for mm, sorry, the letter and string dot lowercase dot. No, I don't need to do fast iteration. The letter string dot lowercase. Um, uh, alphabet. Contains the letter then alphabet so equal to alphabet dot replacing occurrences of uh, string when convert to swoop strings is recognized as a character and in this uh, particular library function only uh, replaces strings, doesn't replace characters, so we have to convert this letter, character, data type to a string. Uh, so it's an empty string. And then we're going to ask every time we uh, find a letter in the alphabet, we're going to ask if the count 
is equal to zero. And if it is equal to zero, we want to return true because there's no point in continuing to go for, uh, for the string without a valid pentagram. We don't want to waste precious uh, computer power to continue going through the um, because then going to the string. The string may be very, very long, and that can be just computationally expensive. So, and then if we get through this entire for loop and we don't find a valid pangram, or we or we still have letters left in our alphabet, and then we return false. Because that means we don't have a valid pangram. Not every letter was identified. Okay? So this is the brute force approach. This is clear, um, straightforward, um, believe it or not, very concise for a brute force approach. And I like the solution a lot. I think this is a good, valid solution. There are more sophisticated ways to solve this and more fancy ways to solve this. Um, but we're going to try this right now to see if this works. Okay, so here's our valid pentagram. We're going to do the quick brown fox jump over the lazy dog and see if that returns true. True, yep. Yeah. Okay, and then we're going to do an invalid pentagram with a period inside of it. Uh, and quick my fox jumped over the lazy dog. That should return false if this works. False, yep. Yeah. And then we're gonna do one more. Just to completely test this out. The two driven jocks help fast one big quiz. This should return true. Yep. Yeah. We're gonna do Three driven fox to show some false. Yep. The five box and verses drop quickly. This should turn true. Yep. And the six box and verses jump quickly. This should turn false. Boom, okay. So this is a valid solution. 